Hi, this is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner at Construction Science. And in this session, I'm going to talk about out-of-sequence work. It's helpful if we can run some sort of a report or filter to help us identify activities that are being performed out of sequence. There's a couple of options. The first option I'm going to show you here is to use a filter. Now what I've done here on the screen is to create a very simple schedule that's been updated once, as you can tell by the data date line. And we have an activity that's out of sequence. This is a finish to start relationship, as verified in the dialog box. But the successor has already started prior to the predecessor being finished. And of course, that's what's creating this gap. For those of you that are familiar with retained logic, you understand that only retained logic will generate this type of gap. That is the only setting I use for calculating a schedule. If you'd like to know more about those settings, feel free to call me anytime, and I'll show you my contact information at the end of this video. But for now, with retained logic, this schedule has created out-of-sequence work. So to find this out-of-sequence work, I'm going to create a filter. I'm using version 8.1, but the process is essentially the same in every version of Primavera. So I've added a name for this filter. Now we're going to go in and actually create the parameters. The first parameter is that we're going to look for a disparity in dates. And the date in particular that we're looking at is remaining early start. So I'm going to come down to the R's. And we have remaining early start. And then the next part here, I'm going to say is not equal to, and I'm choosing the data date. And I'm going to back out a moment just to show you why I did this. I've added a column in my table to represent the remaining early start date. Now for an activity that started, normally you would see the remaining early start date would be the same as the data date of the current schedule. I'm going to hit the F9 key to give you an idea that September 5th is, in fact, the current data date. Now, activities that are not scheduled to start yet, they will always have a remaining early start date that's equal to the current start date. But where we see the disparity is on this activity right here, activity B. The remaining early start date is September 14th, but again, keep in mind, the data date is September 5th. That disparity represents the out-of-sequence work. So let's go back to the filter for a moment. And let's add one more condition, because after all, for activities that have not started yet, none of those will have a remaining early start date that matches the current data date. So we need to make sure that we don't show those activities in this filter. So I'm going to add another line. And to get rid of those activities, quite simple, I'm going to choose Activity Status. I'll come in here and say Equals. And of course, there's only three types of status. So the status that I'm looking for is an activity that's in progress. If the activity was completed, obviously it would no longer be considered out of sequence. Now one last thing to consider anytime you add more than one line to a filter. Do you want both of these conditions to be met or any of these conditions? A good example of any condition would be where I might be searching for activities that have a labor code of mechanical or a labor code of electrical. In other words, I want to see both of those trades wind up in my filter results. But here, I want to make sure that the activity both has an early start date, I should say remaining early start date, not equal to the current data date, and it should already be an activity that's in progress. To set this word and, you click on this phrase right here, and you can see that the other option, any, would give me more than what I want to see. I do not want to have all of the activities showing up because I chose or, but with the and condition, this will work. So let's go ahead and commit to this filter. 
and now you see it. And what I like about this particular filter, it also gives me the context of the out-of-sequence work. I see the predecessor itself. Now keep in mind, the predecessor really would not be considered isolated as an activity that's out of sequence. Its remaining early start date does equal the current data date. But to see that relationship and to know what's causing this activity to be out of sequence is very helpful. Now the other way I can find some of this information is during the normal calculation mode. Again, I'm going to hit F9. And there's a log here. We have an option of storing this log, meaning that it's permanently stored on our computer. But Primavera does normally use this name over and over. So if you want to save this log to file, you'll need to give it a unique name and then go back to the original name, which is SCED log. So let's open up this log. And I'll expand it out here. As we come down, you'll see that Primavera is telling us under warnings that we have an out-of-sequence activity. It's activity 1010, and that's the only one. It's also giving us a count of how many activities out of sequence. So this is certainly another way of seeing it. But I like the Gantt chart better because I think it gives me more context of what exactly is out of sequence, where it's out of sequence in the schedule. I also get a sense of how big is that gap. In some instances, I will have an out-of-sequence activity according to the schedule log, but the gap is quite small, so I'm not really concerned about it too much. As this gap gets larger, because we might in fact have more than one incomplete predecessor, in which case these remaining durations continue building up, in those instances, then I'm getting more concerned. I don't want to see very large gaps there because this remaining work is being held up until all of the preceding work is completed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that explanation of how to find out-of-sequence work. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you.